Hello everyone, this is Chris Mackey and welcome to your sixth tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation. And in this one, if, well, if you guys have been following, we've been, we've been building up these honeybee zones for the past, uh, past few videos. Um, and now, in this one, we're finally going to use these to run a simulation. I mean, we're, there's, admittedly, there's a lot of stuff we haven't changed and we, we really could change to make these things more accurate. But, you know, we have the basics of what, what we really need to run the model. So I'm just going to do this, show you guys the, how the simulation is run right now so you get a sense of it early, early on. And then you, you know as we're changing and adding other things later in the series what what the end goal is um, so you guys can see so actually if you had been following from the last uh, last series uh, I last few videos in the series I actually I, I touched up a few things I mean so the thing is the, the nicer the geometry you put in and the way that you set it up in Rhino the the better that these components that automate everything for you will uh, will behave so you, if you guys remember, we got a, we had this surface with all these crazy different uh, you know ratios that we were getting out of this one, um, and you know and if you just rebuild the geometry I did as I did in Rhino for for this this example here, you guys can see that it actually will will treat it very nicely if if you if you give it nice geometry. So I mean, so that's something to keep in mind. I mean, but if you give it something with a bunch of kinks and stuff in it, that you know that it's not it not isn't necessarily as nice to you, but. Um, but okay, so I, I, you know, I fixed that. I noticed there was a few other things I fixed that that we had left the boundary, the alternate construction to air wall, and I think I'm going to leave them all interior partition uh, for now. I think actually, you know what? I'm going to change this right now. Is that I'm going to set breakup window to false so that we can, you know, so that this energy simulation that we're about to run is is relatively quick. Um, because the more of these little windows that we have, the longer the simulation is going to take. Um, and, uh, and there's really not necessarily much more gain for that because Energy Plus really only cares about the ratio. It doesn't necessarily care too much about the placement of the windows over the, over the whole wall. All right, so this, this is what we're going to run through Energy Plus right now. And you, you know, so we've got a more glazing on the, the south side, but, uh, but, you know, but more tempered glazing on, on the other sides. All right, so to run the simulation, the key thing that we're going to need is this component, this one that, that has the E plus on it. And this is, this is essentially the component, if you drag and drop this, this it's called a write IDF component onto the canvas. This is what, what essentially is going to write out a file that, that energy plus that we installed in the very beginning of the series. To write out a file that it understands and run it through that, that simulation engine. So you can see the things that it requires, I mean, uh, which are the things with the dashes in front of the, the things, if you remember correctly. So it needs the zones. And so, so we have our zones that we've assigned all these properties to. We've been working on the last few videos to try and make. And these zones have schedules and constructions and windows and adjacencies and all this information that's embedded in them now. And so that's, that's where we just feed these into this, this, this run simulation component. But you can see that there are a few other things that it needs. Most importantly now, you, you'll also notice that it needs a weather file. Um, I mean, you guys, if you already know Energy Plus, you know this is this is very basics for you. But I mean, but essentially, this is just asking for a file address. You know, like like you guys have will be working with you know work with usually in Ladybug. So an easy way just to bring that file address in is I mean, all right, well, um, well, we can do the Ladybug uh, open EPW file and just navigate to something on our computer. But you know, what? I kind of like using this faster method. Uh, well, or it tends to be faster when I open reopen the file. So let's. I'm gonna find an, an, a weather file online here by by dragging and dropping in, in Ladybug the the download EPW file and set that to true. So that I'm going over to our our DOE uh, database of all of our EPW files. And let's see, it's North America. I mean, if we're doing my parents' house here, my pa parents are kind of just outside New York City, so we'll go to New York. And let's see, I mean, let's see, JFK isn't too far from us, so I'm going to go and right-click on the zip and go to copy link address to use this method that I like. And, uh, and let's see, and we'll just bring up a panel, and I'll just by double-clicking and doing the quotation marks and doing Control-V to paste that 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 file address that we just copied, that URL, um, into here, and then uh, and then we just have our import EPW and stat. That you know we'll take this URL. So if we drag and drop that and connect up the weather file URL, that will automatically download, unzip, and bring us you know in in into here. You guys don't necessarily need to bring up a panel, but there's our file address of our EPW, and that's what this component wants. That's it. Just it just wants a file address of an EPW on our machine. So we'll take and plug that into there, and uh, we don't really need this thing anymore because we got our weather file. So and we'll just do some some rearranging here. 
Um, all right, so we've got we've got most of the things we need, but let's see. There are probably actually some other things that we want to do. I mean, the only other thing that's required, I guess, is write IDF. But I, I would there's I mean some other things that are pretty strongly recommended. Like for example, maybe maybe we'll set an analysis period. And you you guys are kind of getting the sense of the integration with Ladybug here. But the analysis period that you put in here is the same thing. It's from the Ladybug analysis period that you guys are familiar with. So I'm going to drag and drop one of those on the canvas, and you see the default is for the whole year. But maybe let's guys we'll just run a pretty relatively quick uh, simulation. So maybe we'll just run it for January. So I'm going to do a quotation mark one and set that to my f uh, two month. Uh, and so now, now the analysis period, instead of going for the whole year, should just be from, uh, from that, that, let's see, that January 1st to January 31st. So all right, so we'll take that and we'll plug that into our analysis period so that we're not we're running a quick simulation just for January. And the other really important thing that I would really suggest uh, uh, working with before you run the simulation is these these simulation outputs. So we have a component that allows you that sort of makes it easy for writing these outputs. But the number of outputs that you can request from Energy Plus are like endless. I mean, there's so many like hundreds of possible for uh, outputs that you can request usually for any model. But you know, we try and keep. I mean, usually you're only interested in a few. So if you take this Honeybee Write EP Result parameters, this is the component that will auto auto pick out the the ones that you're probably most interested in. So drag and drop that that, that um, uh, honeybee write result parameters. And you see that what you get here is just a list of things that accept Booleans. So I mean, I'm going to pull up a Boolean toggle. And you say, all right, uh, let's see, I want things related to zone energy use. That, I mean, that's kind of the, one of the main reasons why we're, we're running the model. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set that to true. And you'll see, actually, if I drop a panel, what's coming out of this is that it's, it's just, it's actually, it's writing code that, that that Energy Plus engine understands. And so it's requesting certain things like, you know, and uh, the ideal air loads, which is our essentially our heating cooling system in this model. Um, you know, it's requesting the cooling energy of that, the heating energy of that. Um, and it's requesting things like the, the zone lights electricity and the, and the electric equipment, like the plug loads. Let's see. I probably I want a few other things. So maybe actually, let's comfort metrics. That actually that sounds like it'd be pretty important. And you see that it's now requesting the the operative temperature of the zones and the air temperature, the radiant temperature, the humidity. Um, so that seems pretty useful. I mean, there are a few other things here. I mean, gains and losses gives you like solar gains and people gains and all these these other crazy things. But I think we'll maybe we'll leave that out for now. And you know, the more the more outputs you request, the kind of longer your your simulation might take. So. Um, you know, because some of these things actually, but but okay, actually, yeah. Let's take surface temperature. Um, but yeah, but I mean, like, it's going to take longer because to, you know sometimes it, it has to do an extra calculation to really keep a record of that surface temperature well. Um, but all right, I'd say that this is enough. And and you know, and, but you'll notice one other key thing that we can change with this, and that's the time step in which we want the results. So the default is set to monthly. But you know, you realize in this case where we're just running it for a single month. I mean, it's, it, the results are only going to give us one value. So you, we can request something like, I mean, if I start to pull up a panel here with quotation marks, we can request it hourly. Uh, I spelled that wrong. H O U R L Y, and hit enter. And uh, and so this this will instead of giving me a single value for the whole month of January, and you see it like it changed that to hourly. Now the results will come out with a, a value of air temperature and, and, and energy use for every single hour of the month of January as opposed to one for the whole month. And you can request daily or annual or you know all sorts of different time steps. I mean, or I guess those are really the four main ones that you'll be interested in. Um, but, um, but yeah, but so you can request that now. And I'd say do hourly so that we can you know, really get a sense of all that's going on in these zones uh, after we run the simulation. And we'll hook up these to our simulation outputs in the component. And, uh, and you guys, I mean, there are more that you can request also. There's, well, I, I won't go into all that, that you could possibly request right now. But, but yeah, but know that, that you can just add things to this list of, of, of simulation outputs here. And now all that's left really to, uh, to, in order to, is just to run the simulation. Um, I mean, and you see there are other things. There's an energy sim par that relate to that. I'll, I'll, but I mean, this is, this is the basics of what, what you guys would need to really run a successful simulation and know and get something meaningful out of it. So all right, so I'm going to set the Boolean toggle to true. And you see I can set it to you know, plug it into the right IDF. 
and that'll automatically write out write out an IDF here, which is just something that you know our, the Energy Plus engine understands. Um, but I mean, but just writing the IDF isn't isn't necessarily running it through the engine. So uh, all right, whoops here. Uh, so so if we wanted to run the Energy Plus engine, then we need to plug it into that. And now, now when the component writes the, the IDF, now it will write it and then run it immediately after. And you'll guys see after a few seconds that there'll be a batch file window that opens that is running, running your energy simulation for you. So here you guys go. And you see, and sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always, you can put things that aren't going right in there. But as soon as you see something, you'll see it now, this warming up line. That, that means that your simulation is running correctly, that you've done everything right, um, and that you've set everything up okay. And there'll be some times where you get an, uh, you know, where it doesn't run correctly. And for that, you want to really recheck the, the report output, if, you, if that ever happens, if it doesn't run your simulation correctly. But you see now it's running it for January, and you know, you'll get an update for that every, as if it's running through all the different months of the year. But right now, so it finished January, now it's just compiling everything together. And, um, and boom, there you have it. We have successfully run a simulation. Um, and you'll see that, th I mean, the things that we get out right now are just the, the file address. Um, so it's, 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 I mean, we're, and in this video, we're not really going to pick apart the results yet, but you get a file address for that IDF and you get a, a result file address that has all those nice results in it that we want to take a look at. Um, but this video is just meant to show you guys how to run the simulation. In the next video, we'll start looking at some of the results that we get out of this and, and understanding what this IDF file is. Um, and, uh, but for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and, um, and I'll see you in the next one.